we're carrying on from the uh, original pendulum video which i thought was just novelty but had a phenomenal amount of interest this is uh, pendulum 2 the switch is no more This is now running by sensing the voltage the magnet produces in the coil as it moves and using that to do the timing to generate the power pulse to the coil. So no switch needed, no clicky contacts. Uh, this is a little bit overpowered, it's on, the, on this pendulum, it's actually getting to the point it's bouncing off the coil, which is, uh, needs a little bit of adjustment, but uh, it is a prototype and it's just proved the principle. It's easy enough to put a resistance here to the coil, or that's why it's getting noisy. It's actually hitting the coil, it's in the end of the other bit of the kink in the wire there where I lined it with the coil. I started a bit gentler. It'll gradually work up to uh, the excess swing again. And that's it, it's operating by sensing the, the voltage produced by the coil as the magnet moves and the change in polarity of that voltage as the magnet moves away from the centre of the coil it starts weakening the field rather than increasing as the magnet moves out and as that polarity changes it produces a lot of power pulse. Now I've tried to build it as best I can as a practical usable circuit. The current, other than the coil current, is about two and a half microamps. Let's get carried away again. From the top battery, uh, the positive battery, the, the, the upper of the two cells, there's two AA cells, and about one microamp for the lower one. It's not balanced, unfortunately, but uh, two and a half microamps is not bad for a standby current. You can see it's picking up the pendulum movement just with that little bit but I probably haven't got the magnet centering quite perfect so it might not be starting yeah, it's got some beta in other words you see the magnet is not quite centered in the coil in the neutral position so it's not enough to start off a low amplitude but it's trying it's a little bit more to get it over center both ways no, that's still not enough. Or if it's just centered up better, but it's quite difficult to adjust this lash up rig. The pulse, the click you can hear, is I believe the stress on that bit of thin brass wire that's supporting all the magnets that actually flexes slightly when it gets the uh, pressure from the magnetic field. And uh, it makes it spring and uh, make the whole thing just resonate slightly. If it's not perfect alignment, you can actually hear it click against the side of the coil. That took quite a bit of setting up. Um, but it's due to the magnets having a very small centre hole. That's the only thing I could find to fit through them in one piece. Again, it's getting carried away with itself. You see, it's uh, quite quite enthusiastic. And it'd be very easy to reduce the power, of course it'd be difficult to increase it without more voltage, but uh, seeing it's got plenty, either the pulse time can be shortened or the coil current can be reduced by the series resistor. And the, the pulse time can be shortened by either changing that timing capacitor or the uh, resistor that, rechar that recharges it down there. And I'll go over the circuit in detail um, and show you how it works so you can uh, build your own if you like. There, there may be further refinements of this yet to see if I can get the standing current down a bit more. Though I don't know how much that matters really, to be honest. And it, it, doesn't, seem, <laughs> it doesn't seem to be bad as it is. Okay, so um, more on how it, how it works. Okay, so this is the effect I'm using. Scope set to only trigger when it sees a signal of a certain amplitude. The 
noise pickups because it's between a switch mode power supply and uh, the computer I think there's quite a high level noise but if I move if I can manage to do it without hitting the sides of the coil on here you see there's a negative spike and then a positive spike that way if we go back the other way missed It's probably because I've got the weight, the time base so slow. I've got to wait quite a while. So negative, then positive, and it goes. Oh, my hand goes towards the coil. Negative, then positive, when my hand goes away from the coil. So it doesn't matter which way the magnet's moving. It produces a voltage of one polarity to start with, and the voltage of the opposite polarity as it uh, goes past centre. I think that's quite dramatic. No, I, I, I snagged it that time, it bounced. But you can still see the negative first. If the coil was the other way around, then you'd get the positive vert per first. So it's only the magnet to coil orientation that matters, not the direction of movement. Too soon again. Oh. Positive then negative. <laughs> Not the timing right, there we go. Positive then negative. Positive then negative. <laughs> I don't wreck the thing. Positive then negative. You see, so it's the changeover. If the orientation's correct. What I'm sensing, or what the circuit's sensing, is the voltage coming from the coil when it's not being powered, going from negative to positive. That's coupled through the capacitor to that negative input on the compa on on the comparator there. And if it's greater than the small reference voltage settable by that pot which is from zero to only about 0.3 volt more than the neutral voltage there, the center point voltage that's used from the analog reference. Um, when this goes positive, which is at the center transition, that goes negative, that goes positive, that goes negative, <laughs> that goes positive, that goes positive through the capacitor, that goes negative and turns the transistor on. And the pulse just lasts as long as it takes for that capacitor to, to discharge to the one meg resistor. Then the thing resets and the pulse stops. So the pulse duration is set by that capacitor and that resistor. By changing by making one of those smaller, the pulse can be shortened could actually have something like a, um, a 1 meg preset instead of the 100k resistor there so you've got about a 10 to 1 timing range because as you've seen on the pendulum itself it's a bit, it's a bit over enthusiastic with the pulse length it's got at the moment and the, and the amount of current it's getting uh, which is about 40 ma with the batteries for, uh, fairly new at 3 volts so you can see that's how it works that's that's the trigger mechanism and you've seen from the actual device that it doesn't take much speed of movement, the way I've got the pot set there, for it to trigger and produce a pulse. As I say, it's just that that test rig, or demo rig, uh, was very difficult to set up and I haven't got any way of adjusting the coil slightly sideways. I can twist it and move it up and down, but I can't move it sideways just to get the magnet dead centred with the pendulum central. So... Uh, it's, it doesn't start on its own from a very, very small amplitude. It's got to be just enough speed to go beyond centre both ways, or else it gets slowed down one way because it's a couple of mil off centre. But it works, you know, the circuit works. It's just the mechanical arrangement, which is up to really whoever's building it. If you want to, if you want to use it in a clock of some sort, which I think this is good enough to actually be used in a clock. 
um, for a one second pendulum cycle, half a, half a sweep each way. The pendulum length, um, I looked up online, it wants to be 248.4 millimetres from the pivot point to the centre of gravity. Um, or about twice that if you, uh, twice that, four times that even. Um, it's, it's, it's quite a bit longer if you want it to swing one second each each half half cycle. But, um, there's there's plenty of material online if you want to pick it up, but uh, it is getting quite a long way for for a, a reasonable clock and a simple mechanism, just using the pendulum motion to to run a little ratchet wheel on a sixty tooth gear or a sixty tooth wheel. You could have the minute hand, sorry the, the second hand being driven directly from the pendulum ratchet and then the gearing down from that to the other hands. It could be interesting one day to do a 3D printed clock from that, but uh, I've got too many other projects on the moment. <laughs> anyway, oh, I, just, I will add another bit, just giving more details of how this prototype is built. Just to follow on from here, if you want to know the technical details of the circuit, uh, the circuit diagram will be linked from the video d description. I hope that's uh, of interest, and... Uh, Thanks for watching.